I was perfectly happy to do the dinosaurs, the technique that Phil Tippett had honed to a fine point. And we had settled on that for Jurassic Park. Personally, I didn't think the CG was ready to do Jurassic Park, for at least for the close-ups of the dinosaur. I thought maybe we could do like some stampede sequences, because what computers are good at is like in word processor, you could clone something a million times. You can copy a word and, and duplicate it a hundred times on the page or anything you want. Well, it's true also of models. And so you could do it with dinosaurs. You could make one Gallimimus dinosaur and, and clone 20 of them and have them all running with the same run cycle. That's the sort of thing that's really hard to do with stop motion or anything like that. But we started doing these tests in CG before the show was going on, and our tests started looking better and better. Dennis Muren took us all out to a lunch, and he said that Spielberg's coming up with this film, and it's gonna be stop motion, Tippett's doing all the work, and would it be possible to add motion blur to the stop motion data? So Mark and I bought it up right away. Why don't we just build the whole damn thing in CG? Oh, no. No, 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 you can't do it. I immediately stuck up my arm and said, hey, come on, come on, digital dinosaurs. But it was definitely, we had to evolve to that point. Spielberg, I believe, had already begun the process of designing and building dinosaurs quite some time before with Stan Winston's group. They do amazing animatronic, puppeteering, sculptures, etc. that whole world of physical visual effects. And we we're gonna use Phil Tippett, who was considered at the time the best in stop motion. Stop motion essentially is, is that if you wanted to have a dinosaur walk, you're posing it, you take a picture, then you do the next pose and you take that picture. Jurassic Park for everyone was, can you do something that's real, that's alive, that's breathing, that sweats? So there was a lot of doubt, a lot of doubt about that. You know, stop motion was sort of a well-defined process. What Stan was going to do was well-defined. We were just kind of coming in and saying, well, what if we can do this? Wouldn't it make a much more dynamic film? The test was a herd of running gallimimuses, and he didn't flesh them out. He just basically uh, put the bones in motion. It didn't have that kind of artificial look. It was completely realistic. It looked like skeletons had come to life and were just running throughout Hawaii. And all the onus of stop motion photography was suddenly eradicated. We were both kind of wondrous about what this was promising, this industry. Hey. All right. Good. Here we turn. Look. Hey guys, look. Start by going on the live action set and shooting what's called a plate. 
The plate is the background that you're ultimately going to insert that digital character in this example. The plate comes back to the artist. They create a virtual topography that reflects what they've seen in that shot. They build a character in the computer. They build its bones, they build its structure. They then come up with surfaces and skins for it. They color it, they give it eyes, they give it motion, they give it fingernails. They rig it so that it can be animated. So they take that photograph background plate, they take that character and they animate the character in the computer space to fit into that photographic plate. When that's done to the director's satisfaction, they actually composite it into the scene. Once it's composited into the scene, it is filmed out of the computer and cut into the film, and hopefully everybody loves it in the movie house. It started out where it was only gonna be a few shots, then it was a few more shots. By the end of the show, Stephen rewrote the ending of it so that we could do a close-up of a T-Rex, and it takes place in this rotunda with these two raptors and then the T-Rex comes in, it pans down, a raptor jumps on it, it lifts it up. I mean, that's the most amazing thing. And we had no idea two weeks before that that we could even do a shot that close. decade from genetics than a century of digging up bones. A whole new frontier has opened up. We have our first genetically modified hybrid. We just went and made a new dinosaur? Probably not a good idea. Almost 40 feet high. Really think she climbed out? Depends. On what? What kind of dinosaur they cooked up in that lab? Evacuate the island. She's a highly intelligent animal. Clever girl. She will kill anything that moves. Oh, God. Jurassic Park revolutionized special effects in the way movies are made today. The risk the ILM team took in revolutionizing CGI in movies was a huge achievement in film. By moving from stop motion animation to full CGI dinosaurs, Jurassic Park opened doors and showed new breakthroughs for all movies to come. With the growth of technology comes the growth of people and our expectations on what we deem as real. The Jurassic Park franchise evolved the film industry by taking risks and stretching CGI to its full capabilities. 